Regarding quality one, mm -hmm. what does a soul-based understanding that divine truth is infinite look like in my personal life? Yes, now these are very important questions to ask because it's one thing to say, look, God's truth is infinite. It's quite another thing then to understand how or what effect that has on your day-to-day -day life and day-to-day -day existence. Firstly, if I truly felt that God's truth was infinite, I would never feel that a book contains all of God's truth. Mm -hmm. So... I would never say such things as the Bible is the only word of God or the Koran is the only word of God. I would never say such things if I truly understood in my heart that God's truth is infinite. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I wouldn't be in this constant, uh, desire, I wouldn't have this constant frustration about not knowing everything. And in I, fact, I'd never think that I would know everything, would I? Exactly. And in fact, I wouldn't expect myself to know everything, mm -hmm. even. I would have some love for myself for the fact that I'm a finite being created by God with the capacity for growth only by receiving God's love. But as a finite being at any single point in time, I have a finite understanding of anything at any point in time. And instead of punishing myself for that or, or blame, you know, if, if I'm focusing on other people, you know, blaming them for not knowing everything mm -hmm. instead of uh, wanting a person who knows everything, I will give up all of those things if I understood this in my soul. Because I'd, I'd know that's not even possible. I'd know it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in trying to blame somebody that they didn't know everything? And what's the point of trying to feel that you should know everything? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't know everything. You're not God. You're not going to know everything. You will approach more and more knowledge if you develop this relationship with God. But you, if you are truly connected to this quality of truth, which is that God's truth is infinite, you would know for certain that there's no need for you to know everything. <laughs> yeah. And also that you're never going to know everything mm -hmm. and that there's no book that knows everything and there's no person that knows anything and nobody that you meet now or in the future is going to know everything, yeah. and so you wouldn't expect them to. Yeah. You wouldn't have an emotional uh, projection of anger or rage at them because they didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't feel frustration with them because they didn't know everything. You would treat life as a learning experience. You would relax with the learning experience because you wouldn't expect yourself or other people to know everything yeah. because you know that God's truth is infinite and, and when this truth is in your soul, you then do not expect everybody around you to work against that truth. You know that everyone around you is going to have to conform to that single truth. And for that reason, it's a very good truth to know. Mm. It also relaxes you with regard to your interpersonal relationships if you feel this in your heart. Because if somebody has a different opinion to you, you don't automatically say, well, just because the Bible says this, that means you're wrong. You don't say things like that when you know this in your heart. What you go is, okay, I don't know everything. The person I'm talking to doesn't know everything. Only God knows everything. So perhaps I need to listen to this for a bit just to determine whether it's something that I know for certain is not true or, or is true by through experience and through scientific evidence and through mathematical evidence and through experience of life that it is a finish, finishing up to be something that turns out to be true. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's an element of truth in it. Or maybe there's no truth in it at all. It's just a personal opinion. But, but you wouldn't be dogmatic about those particular things unless you knew for certain and only would know for certain through the proof that you have available with you and not the proof, that so-called proof, that's in a book. Because mm -hmm. the book doesn't contain proof. It is just the writings of individuals who have written down information and it doesn't contain everything. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't contain all the truth that you could uh, potentially learn. And so in your interpersonal relationships, if you understand this principle that divine truth is infinite, you wouldn't be trying to force everybody to know everything. You wouldn't be trying to force your opinion on everyone because you would have this underlying feeling that maybe my opinion might have to change in the future. And if I've forced it on people, and, it, and, and if you look historically at what's happened, we've forced it on people through violence, you wouldn't even do that mm -hmm. because you know that God's truth is infinite and you don't necessarily know it all. Yeah. So why would you then force it upon someone else when you potentially might be wrong? Mm 
you wouldn't do that. You would just present it and let people make up their own mind. Yeah, okay. And you said this very nice thing a couple of times about relaxing about your progress. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be fair to say, wouldn't it, within that, you're saying we're relaxing with the idea that we're eternally progressing, mm. that we're always going to grow to be looking for, at discovering new truth, finding new things. And becoming more loving. Like yeah. if, if, if God's truth is infinite, it makes sense also that God's love is infinite. And if God's love and truth are in, infinite, then it, and I can receive love and I can receive truth, then it means that I will learn more and more of the infinite truth and have more and more of the infinite love if I choose to do things God's way, but I can never say that I know everything. Mm -hmm. I will never be able to say that I'm as loving as God is. Mm. Never. 